So welcome, welcome to the uh, world record holder Thank for you. the longest chess long, marathon, longest <laughs> chess marathon Absolutely. which you, when was it that you won it was this? in April. In April. Yeah. And you play chess for how many hours? 60 hours. 60 incredible hours. No sleep, nothing. Wow, no sleep. <laughs> so you must really love chess. <laughs> I mean, I played enough chess for yeah. at least another decade. Uh, but yeah, yeah, and did you? Was, is it true that you didn't lose any games, or you lost? I, some I mean, games? on the challenger board, no, no, I won all the games. You uh, won all the, the games board, yeah. on the challenge board, mm -hmm. and played chess for an incredible 60 hours. 60 hours. Are you a man or machine? <laughs> You're a chess machine. A blend of both. No, but I mean, it's it's a huge congratulations. But Thank you, you know, but beyond that. The reason that you're doing it is for a really kind of impactful um, purpose. So tell us about that. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know this. You know, um, I'm the founder of a non-profit called Chess and Slums Africa. It's a non-profit organization that uses the game of chess as a tool to foster the social and intellectual development of children from slums, from the slums. And the general idea really is to give an entry point into education for young right. people. And Nigeria has 20 million children out of school. And how do we define world. education for a lot of these people that are falling through the cracks and don't fit in, even, if we even fit into the conventional educational system anymore. So it's us trying to reimagine education and using chess as a basic entry point to provide a lot of the skills that education for me, for me is a capacity for thoughts, for independent thoughts, for problem right. solving, and to use chess as, as a medium to give them that, that, that ability to be able to think critically, to become thinkers, and to be empowered intellectually as well. I, I followed your story for a while, and so, it's so moving, some of the Thank stuff you. that you do. Tell us about some of the children that you have impacted through Chess in Slums. There's some really touching stories, so I Thank really you. want you to share those. Yeah, I mean, it's been such an incredible journey, filled yeah. with meaning and in the last seven years. Um, I think one story that really strikes out was when we went to Osho the Underbridge in Lagos. In Lagos and for those yeah. that are familiar with Osho the Underbridge, one of the most dangerous ghettos in, the, in, in Nigeria and it's, a, it's basically a hub, you know, hot spot for criminals and these are people that have done very heinous things to survive. And we went there, you know, because we saw there were children amongst them and these are like homeless kids, a lot of them have been orphaned and they had to go there to find survival, to find the care that they never got within society. And we went there because we felt there was no single story about any people, and to empower them in a way that the world could see the potential that they had, and to not neglect the problem until it, con until it becomes a much bigger problem, where right. you see them on the street as thugs. We went there with a few chess buds, and for the next seven months we started training these children. I could barely even speak any English. I have very little education. Yeah. But they started to show great aptitude for chess, for chess. and all its complexities. And it was <coughs> such a moment because at the end of the training, we did a tournament for them. And it became a success story where the children were now celebrated for their intellectual capacity. And people traveled from all over the world to come to Osho on that bridge, one of the most dangerous places in the world. It became not just a classroom for people to learn, but a place where that truly inspired hope in the hearts of so many people. You know, the, the Deputy High Commissioner of the Canadian Embassy he came to sit with the kids to play chess with them, the Royal Naval Officers that, yes. came, that were in the country. They came and the children beat all of them. Right. And it was a true testament that, you know, it isn't that possible to do great things from a small place. And one of the boys that won there was a boy called Fawaz that was just another street homeless kid trying to survive. And he found chairs and that gave him an identity. And more importantly, it helped him find his place in the world. Right. Now that boy now does a bit of um, software engineering and mm -hmm. he's doing well. And that is what we're trying to do, to use chess as a way to create opportunity. It's incredible. I mean, because some of these kids would never dream that they could yeah. play chess or even like see a chessboard, you know, not to talk about really yeah. like beating other people. But that's the thing, talent yeah. is universal, but opportunity yeah. isn't. If you bridge the opportunity gap, you'll be yeah. astounded by what they can do with it. Absolutely. And so what's your connection with Gabby? Mm. Um, what do you know about, uh, about the, the alliance and, you know? I mean, um, it's my first time here, okay. you know, and uh, I've spent some time just listening to some of the speakers. Um, the, the first panel, um, Ingi, my friend was on the first panel, and I think it's a convergence of ideas of people that 
are solving hard problems. People that are, and I say this, like when you walk into rooms like this, you know, where, you know, Gabby. Yeah. I, I think the first thing that comes to mind is, who are the people that are not in this room? And all of us being here, how is our presence, you know, holding space for them? How is our presence of making sure like the voices of the people back that can't make it to places like this uh -huh. can be heard yeah. and seen? And, and, and it's why these conversations are important. So we can have that convergence and we can go over the ideas of why we do what we do and the people that have the resource and the people that have the, the passion to execute on ground that we can you know, find convergence for them. So, because if you want to change the world, someone has to pay for it. So Absolutely. I think Gabby is that important convening point for you know, the leaders, um, the people with resource to come together and solve problems for the people that cannot make it to this room. Fantastic. So one final thing I want you to do is tell our viewers how you are making sure that Africa is uns is and will become unstoppable. All right. So um, hello, everyone. My name is Tuna Nakoya, and I'm a national master of chess. Africa's success is inevitable. And I think, you know, with the work that I do to ensure that Africa becomes unstoppable is to put spotlight on the potential. Africa has a lot of potential, but potential is nothing if it's not realized, right? So we have to go from, you know, talking about Africa's potential to actually actively investing in it. And I have picked the mountain because I see that there's a huge gap in education, you know, to provide educational opportunities for the children. Because if we raise a new generation of thinkers, of critical thinkers, they will turn our biggest problems into global opportunities. And that is what we need. And not only do we need these thinkers, we need them to emerge from a place of duty and empathy to their own communities as well. If we can raise a million children from, from low-income communities, from the slums, we can reach critical mass. And those same people, when they're empowered with the right education, they will go back to their communities and they will create the same prosperity for other people like them. And this is how we become unstoppable. Because our children are our greatest investment, not the resource. And we cannot tell them that there is no hope. And as long as there's hope for the children, there's hope for Africa. And I'm part of this movement as well. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You so it's much been so wonderful me. to have you. Lovely to meet you as well.